This is why human consciousness is actually much more than just an analogue computer, because how can an analogue computer pull itself out of the system that it's stuck within? Yet we seem to be able to shift um, uh, from f outside the system to see meaning of that sentence, go inside the system, prove that it can't be proved. The challenge is that even when we're working outside the system, we are ourselves still working within another system. What's happening, people? It's consciousness higher dimensional is the phenomena of consciousness or what we experience as an unadulterated awareness of existence the result of neural processes forming higher dimensional structures you may be wondering why i'm asking this and obviously the answer is to expand our degrees of mental freedom pondering things that may not be that are unlikely or scarcely probable is one of the best ways of expanding our perspective and really keeping us from being limited mentally by anything other than absolute truth and unequivocal rightness because what i'm discussing here is mostly speculative but not entirely. I'm calling this a hypo theory because it's more reasonable than a pure hypothesis, but not quite solid enough to be treated as an actual theory. So could consciousness be higher dimensional? Assuming that higher dimensions aren't purely mathematical concepts, could the experience of conscious awareness be the result of higher dimensional activity viewing lower dimensional activity? Here's what I mean. Mathematicians and even some physicists believe that there are dimensions above and beyond the three spatial dimensions we experience as human beings. Some have posited as many as 11 if you include time as a dimension, and others believe that there may be no limit to these dimensions. Now, what this means is that there is a non-zero likelihood that there are many, many more ways for something to move in this universe than just front to back, side to side, or up and down. There is almost certainly a host of degrees of freedom beyond the three axes X, Y, and Z provided to us in a three-dimensional coordinate plane. Visualizing this, we can see that a two-dimensional plane, one represented by a flat sheet of paper, has an additional two degrees of freedom available at every point, even though we may restrict ourselves or something else to the paper. An ant crawling along the paper wouldn't be aware that up and down were possible, but we can see that it's always a possibility from our perspective. In this same way, an additional spatial dimension would be available at every point in our three-dimensional reality. At every point that we wanted to look or rest our mind on, there would be an out into a higher dimension. All around us, everywhere we look, even though we can't see it, is an access point into a higher dimension, potentially. Just like every point on that 2D plane or piece of paper is an access point into the third dimension. What that would look like is beyond our ability to imagine directly, at least my ability to imagine. But we can conceive of a sphere around us and every point on that sphere being an out, a pathway into a higher dimension. Now... We could also conceive of moving in and out of these dimensions arbitrarily as moving in and out of space and time or moving to a different location in space and time without having to move through space time itself. Now that we're able to map and study significant amounts of dynamic live brain activity, scientists and mathematicians are studying the connections between neurons using a discipline known as algebraic topology. Connected neurons form vertices and the vertices form simplicial complexes which are effectively mathematical representations of physical structures. What they're finding is that the connections our neurons form have a higher dimensional quality to them, a quality that can be quantified by studying and detailing the features of the formed structures. Now whether or not our brain activity, our neural energy actually reaches into higher spatial dimensions is debatable, but if it does, if it did, the math suggests that it would reach as high as the seventh or eighth dimension. Now, this may seem inconsequential to us at first because it doesn't really change anything in terms of our direct and immediate experience of existence in life, but it does offer us a potentially scientifically verifiable way of understanding consciousness and the mind, if it's possible. Now, since we're not quite there yet, more on my hypo theory. As brain activity spikes, forming more complex structures and thrusts into higher spatial dimensions, it offers us a secondhand perspective on our own mind. This brain activity spiking would be what we experience as conscious volition, conscious thought, conscious self-awareness, and it effectively builds a second mind, a higher mind, capable of viewing a lower mind. This may be what allows us to have perspective on ourself. It may be what allows us to view our thoughts and our own memories in a relatively objective fashion. Memories, feelings, emotions, and unwilled thoughts all being more primitive advents would be housed in the lower mind, while conscious awareness and conscious volition would see these activities from a vaulted position. The collapsing of stimuli-induced higher dimensional activity back down into the lower mind would be experienced by us as the cessation of conscious awareness or conscious thought, potentially. All of these activities, higher mind and lower mind, all part of the same brain-mind mechanism, just momentarily distinguished 
in terms of dimensionality. While I've yet to see it discussed formally, a raising of dimensionality beyond the seventh and eighth may be what leads to people reporting profound spiritual and transcendental experiences. Once the mind begins to approach the ninth and tenth dimension, a perspective could be obtained where things are seen more objectively, less personally, and more absolutely. An awareness beyond personal memory, feeling, thought, beyond the individual concern is what likely allows people to have a feeling of going beyond themselves, of being able to perceive and understand and know things that aren't normally perceptible in a non-higher dimensional state, in a non-vaulted perspective. Breaching dimensions high enough may actually restructure or reshape the global simplicial complex in just enough of a way to provide a scaffolding for the overmind to have a ceaseless awareness of the lower mind and also an understanding of its position with respect to the lower mind. I think the answer and the truth of this may be something altogether different, but that's why we're calling this a hypo theory. I don't know if any of this will ultimately be proven to be true, but it's not a bad candidate. It's not a bad place to start for trying to understand how we're able to have self-awareness, how we're able to model and project and think in the fashion that we do in organisms with seemingly less complex brain mind mechanisms are not. Now, I put a lot of links in the description, a few of them, for some source and reference material if you want to dive deeper on this topic. And if you enjoy hypotheoretic discussions like this one, like and subscribe so I'll know that you want to see more of these. Either way, I thank you for watching this one. I hope you have a great day. Take care.